All of you were asking the same thing. How can I edit remotely or work from home? Today we'll look at Avid, as they have many supported options, so you can cut with Media Composer from just about anywhere. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to another episode of Five Things, a web series dedicated to answering the five burning tech questions that you have about technologies and workflows in the media creation space, plus tech stuff I dig and how it's used. I'm still your host, Michael Kamis. Now, Avid may not have the largest install base, but Media Composer is found in a vast majority of high profile broadcast television and theatrical projects. Due to these high budgets and even higher pressure scenarios, Avid has had to devise remote editing solutions that give the editing experience they're demanding users expect while retaining the collaboration tools that they're known for. Unfortunately, the marketing for these tools is often very confusing. From the basic, what's it called? To what solution is best for me? To the inevitable, well, how much does it cost? We'll cover all of that today. The first method we'll look at is simply extending your desktop. That is, having your processing computer at the office while you work from home and remote into that machine. This has been the crutch that most facilities have relied on in the past few weeks. Let's examine how this works. First, this scenario assumes that you edit at a facility where all of the network computers and all of the shared storage is, and that you can't take any of those things home. This can be due to security or other concerns like needing access to hundreds of terabytes of data. In this case, the creatives are sent home and IT installs a remote desktop hardware or software solution on each of the machines. The creatives then connect through a VPN or a virtual private network to gain secure access from their home editing fortresses of solitude back into the facility and attempt to work as normal. Now, topically, this sounds like a real win-win, right? you get access to your usual machine and usual shared storage. Sure, you lose little things like a confidence monitor, if you had one, but you should be fine, right? The devil, as always, is in the details. Might be time to get some fresh air, start paying attention to the details. Some of those details might need your help. Typical screen sharing software solutions that are installed on your office editing machine are often dumpster fires for creatives. Yeah, I said it. I'm not saying they're bad for general IT usage or when you need to remote in and re-export something, but by and large, most screen sharing protocols do not give a great user experience. Full frame rate, audio and video sync, color fidelity, and responsiveness usually suffer. Solutions like TeamViewer, Apple or Microsoft Remote Desktop, VNC, or most any of the other web-based solutions fail hard. You'll pull your hair out way before you finish an edit. Now, moving up to more robust solutions like HP's RGS, remote graphics software, or a top-of-the-line solution like Teradici's PC over IP software is about as good as you're gonna get. The license cost may be a few hundred dollars too, depending on your configuration. But here's the kicker, they're Windows only. Okay, have you composed yourself? Wipe your tears, suck it up, and let's continue. Quite unfortunately, there does not exist a post-production creative-friendly screen sharing solution for Mac OS. Now, the only solution I've come across over these many years is a company called Amulet Hotkey. Yeah, that's their name. Who take the Teradici PC over IP Terra 2 card and put it into a custom external enclosure and then add some secret sauce. You then feed the output of your graphics card plus your keyboard, mouse, and audio into the device and the PC over IP technology takes over. It's quite frankly, the best of both worlds, PC over IP and Mac OS. Now this ain't gonna be cheap. Expect a few thousand dollars per hardware device and availability at the moment may be difficult. You're also gonna need to do some network configuration for quality of service and then decide how you're going to receive the screen share at home, either on a laptop, desktop, or with a zero client. There is no doubt that as a Media Composer user, you've already tried this. It's the simplest and least expensive way to have multiple users working on Avid projects at the same time while not in the same building. Wait a second, let's back up and review how this works before we jump into the nitty gritty. 
We start off as we did before, with everyone working at the facility on network computers and shared storage. We then begin to replicate the media from the facility onto portable drives. Obviously, this could be a security risk and you could potentially break the contract your facility might have with the content providers. But that's a soapbox I'll get on later in the episode. Replicating that media will require some serious media management. This means an accounting system to track who has the media, as well as a tight versioning schema. You'll need to look at syncing schemas as well to get new media out to users, unless the editor is coming back to the facility for updated content. This may or may not also include someone at the facility creating lower resolution proxies, so editors can go home with a few terabytes of media instead of dozens of terabytes of media. Often this may include watermarks on the media as well, as yet another level of accountability in the event of a leak. Once that media is home with the editor, there has to be a standardization on folder organization, naming conventions, and an extreme amount of attention paid to media management. Avid has always had a fantastic way of project management. Projects link to any number of bins, and those bins contain sequences, and both point to media. This means bins are small files that can be emailed or dropboxed or otherwise shared with other users quite easily. Provided each user has the appropriate media, Media Composer can be coaxed into relinking to the media when a new bin is loaded. This workflow does present some gotchas. Any rendered files will most likely need to be re-rendered on each machine, and multiple users can't work on the same bin or at the same time with the usual red lock, green unlock ability. So there does have to be some communication so as not to mess up someone else's life's work. You couldn't understand the kind of commitment that I have. You were in a man's life's work and you think you can walk away. You got blinders on to the world. Now, obviously, you'll need to have a computer with a licensed copy of Media Composer, plus the plugins you may need. Maybe you'll have to grit your teeth with that old laptop collecting dust in the garage. Or maybe, just maybe, you have the time and budget for the next few solutions. The next solution is newish to the Avid family and has traditionally only been something you did within the four walls of your facility and then out to your local edit bays, not to your home. Media Composer Cloud VM involves investing in a stack of servers at your facility and running VMs or virtual machines on these stacks of servers. On these VMs, a specially licensed copy of Media Composer Ultimate runs. Typically, this is done so only everyone within the facility can access their computers, Media Composer, and shared storage from anywhere in the facility, and IT can administer everything from one location. No need to have computers in each of the bays. It's sort of like the old tape room methodology. As everyone is in the same facility, latency is cut down. Plus, using tools like Teradigi's PC over IP software solution gives the user a very fluid creative experience. Recently, some facilities have been asking the question, if our users are simply remoting into the VMs while they're here in the office, why can't they do the same if they're at home? As you can imagine, quality of service and the user experience are paramount in the Avid world, so this was usually discouraged. In fact, as of this video, Avid still only recommends this for users within a facility, but this hasn't stopped folks from trying it and using it. With respect, Professor, we've tried that hundreds of times. It only has to work once. So, users go home, and on their laptops or desktops or Xero clients, they load up their Teradici PC over IP client and connect via a VPN back to the facility mothership and continue working, much like we covered in option one with extending your desktop. There are a few caveats, however. This is not a light em up tomorrow solution. This requires specific servers, specific switches, and specific builds. Expect tens of thousands of dollars. It also requires upgraded licenses, not just for Media Composer, but many third-party software solutions and plugins either don't handle virtualization well or want to charge you for the privilege. And playing with third-party storage may not be a pleasant experience. And since you use the Teradigi PC over IP handshake to access the VMs, the virtualized environment is still Windows only. Stop it. There is no crying in tech. Teradici PC over IP, while a fantastic protocol, does have some limitations when it comes to creatives. Higher end color grading may be difficult as PC over IP is limited to 8-bit viewing, although the newer Ultra variant does have 10-bit capability. 
Audio is limited to stereo playback and don't expect a confidence monitor output. It's just the computer screens. But for most editing purposes, it'll work just fine. This solution has actually been around for many years, but it was just called something different and mainly found within news type deployments. The premise is pretty elegant. If Avid Media Central UX, formerly branded as Interplay, was already your asset management du jour and managing and tracking your media at your facility, why couldn't it serve up that media on demand to wherever you were? And thus, Avid devised what is now known as Media Composer Cloud Remote. Media Composer Cloud Remote, when coupled with Media Central Production Management, allows servers at your facility to serve up real-time proxies of your on-premise media out to your remote machines. The end user has a full version of Media Composer and connects over a VPN back to the facility. The user checks out a project for the server, which is linked to media on Avid Nexus shared storage, which is back at the facility. When the local version of Media Composer attempts to access media, the local software retrieves that media from the server at the facility and streams a low-res version in real time to your local machine. You are literally playing media in your timeline that's being served up from hundreds or thousands of miles away, all within the familiar environment of Media Composer. Here's the best part. Your local copy of Media Composer can run on either Windows or Mac OS. Avid Media Composer Cloud Remote also has the added bonus of allowing remote users to work with their local media and then upload that in the background to the facility and checking it into the shared storage so others can access that same media. It's a pretty slick solution. However, Cloud Remote is simply a software option on top of Avid's Media Central production management solution, meaning remote editing with streamed proxies is not the main selling point of the system. It's the asset management, the automation, and the collaborative features that drive companies to invest in it, with remote editing as an add-on. It's like buying a house because it has a real cool garage. It's also not cheap, nor easy to administer. You're going to need an Avid ACSR to handle it, plus stacks of servers and storage. Expect over 100K to get going. Once configured, however, it's tech elegant and very cool. Edit On Demand was a relatively quiet beta solution by Avid, and it's only really been viable for the past year. It's available in early access and by request only. In essence, Avid Edit On Demand is accessing Media Composer software that's running in a public CSP or a cloud service provider, in this case, Microsoft Azure. The application, the Nexus storage, and everything you need to edit with is in the cloud, and you access it via a laptop, desktop, or a zero client. It's very similar to the method I talked about earlier, virtualizing and extending with Media Composer Cloud VM. The difference here is that everything is in the cloud, not at your private facility. Let's take a look. We'll start where we've started at every workflow, the traditional edit at a facility. We'll then take that infrastructure and virtualize it within the Microsoft Azure cloud and only on a Windows desktop. Editors get to use Media Composer Ultimate and they get access to Cloud Nexus storage. So bin locking and project sharing works as you would expect them to. It's then editing business as usual. Like the other virtualized scenarios, this solution is also built on Teradici's PC over IP protocol. So the user experience is fantastic. Avid has also partnered with File Catalyst to enable users to upload and download content to and from the Cloud Nexus. This type of solution allows productions to scale up and down quickly as needed and plays right into the OpEx business model. And because it's in the cloud, it allows users to work from all around the world. The usual caveats apply. There is no video monitor output currently and audio is still limited to stereo audio. And no, Pro Tools is not supported in any cloud. It's also not easy to get other applications installed on the workstation or direct administrator access to the Nexus storage. Pricing starts around $3,000 per user per month, assuming 200 hours of workstation usage. You can also buy hours and users in bundles, as well as blocks of storage in terabytes. 
And while this price is a little steep for freelancers, it certainly is the fastest way to get to scale quickly and without a massive CapEx investment. While available technology, certain frames, what can and cannot physically be done, were still hampered by stagnant security restrictions and guidelines and outdated work environment expectations. Many of the security requirements that are jammed into contracts are outdated and have not been revised, namely because no one wants to question it and potentially lose a large client. The looming worry of a hack, which is more often than not simply a password that was socially engineered, creates extreme paranoia and the stacking of security protocols on top of more protocols. Mark my words, you're gonna see a serious revamp of security recommendations after this is all over, and quite frankly, before this is over. I'm also hopeful that once these security guidelines are revisited and ultimately revamped, that facilities begin to realize that if you hired someone to represent your company, your brand, and generate the work that gets you paid, you'd trust them to work remote in some capacity. Do you have more avid remote editing or work from home concerns other than just these five questions? Ask me in the comment section. Also, please subscribe and share this tech goodness of this entire series with the rest of your tech friends. They've got nothing else better to do right now. Until the next episode, learn more, do more. Thanks for watching.